Well, hi there. Welcome back. Uh, my name is Sheldon McLeod. This is Thinking Out Loud. It's presented to you here exclusively on the Saltwire Network. And I had written earlier that there's empathy and there's sympathy. And you can be sympathetic towards somebody's situation, but until you really know what they're going through, it's hard to have empathy. And, and in no way am I saying that I can completely understand what it's like to not have your electricity for as long as some folks have been going uh, since the storm system that blew through. In fact, it was the, uh, well, the subject of an editorial this week, still feeling powerless after Fiona. And 12 days and counting since uh, this storm system made landfall. Actually, it's more than that. It's almost two weeks. And uh, we've got uh, Carrie Smith here joining us. And Carrie has been without her electricity for, um, well, Carrie, how long has it been? Um, it's 13 days. 13 days. Wow. Wh where exactly are you at? Where is your home at? Um, in Durham, Pitta County. Okay. And as we know, that was one of the hardest hit areas. So tell me about when the power went out, what, what it was like for you guys. Um, it went out about just before midnight on Friday night. Um, and that was just when the wind was starting to pick up. And then after that, well, it was just nothing but devastation and no power sense. And uh, obviously, um, you know, we're told to be ready for 72 hours, but to be on our own just in case. So tell me what it was like in those, the first day, the second day, the third day, when you realized it may be, might be longer than 72 hours. Um, we, were, we were prepared. We had enough probably gasoline and stuff and food for the 72, the, you know, 72 hours. And living in the country, you sort of prepare yourself for an extra day or so. Um, once it was going to be past that, you, you you do sort of go into a panic where you're going to get gas. Gas stations aren't open, no power. <laughs> um, some places that were open was only cash only. So, you know, that was quite difficult as well to obtain gas. And um, then it's a matter of if you live in the country, run water. You, you don't have that. <laughs> So it, it's been quite hard, especially 13 days now. It's quite difficult. It's quite expensive with gas prices to keep generators running if you're, if you're lucky enough to have a generator. And basically, generators are just keeping your fridge and your freezers going at this point. Uh, and I've heard some people say that they were frustrated by the lack of information. What, what, what's it been like with the restoration time and the information that you're hearing from, from Nova Scotia Power? Um, it, it is quite frustrating because uh, they will change it and it seems to be the same date for everybody all of a sudden. It's the, you know, okay, well, it's October 9th, but that's across the whole board type of thing. So it's kind of, okay, well, you know, some people are getting it earlier, some people aren't, you know, where, where, are, you, where are we at type of thing. Um, there wasn't a lot, a lot of information at first given out. Um, you know, there wasn't really anything on the radio stations really to inform people if you were able to listen to a radio. Um, that was a big thing too. People without landlines or cell phones not working properly. It was really hard to obtain any information. You were kind of just honestly left in the dark and alone. When will your power come on or, or what's the estimate right now? Our estimated date now is October the 9th. So what does that do to your Thanksgiving plans? That completely ruins everything for Thanksgiving. Yeah. So so what can what can you do other than wait? That's about it, really. I mean, um, we're, we're the household that has everybody at our house for the family meals. Both families always come down. And we do a friend and Thanksgiving combination and... Unfortunately, um, with low power, that's just not able to happen, as well as so much property damage, so it's hard to even to even get to that point. Yeah, was your heart, was the house damaged in the storm? Uh, we did. We had seven trees on our house. Um, quite a lot of damage. Uh, one whole side of our property, every tree is completely gone. It's quite devastating when you look at 20 years of hard work and gone within two two or three hours. Some people have been angry and upset and frustrated. What, what do you want Nova Scotia Power to know about your situation? What do you want people who are hearing this to know? Um, no, honestly, I, I mean, I, I know they're working the hardest. I know it's a, a lot of damage. 
you really wouldn't know how much damage it is until you take the drive around the county and you actually see personally. Um, I guess what's frustrating in a way is uh, what I'm hearing and what I see is in little groups of homes, you know, there might be only five homes within the area that don't have power and it's because either a power pole was down or it was disconnected, the line was disconnected. And because of that, we're sort of pushed at the bottom of the list, which is it's quite frustrating. I mean, I'm happy my neighbors got the power, but at the same time, you're you kind of envy because you're like, wow, this kind of sucks. Here I am in the dark. <laughs> and like like I say, I've never had to experience a two week power interruption. And I don't think many people outside of, you know, a few thousand people in Pictou County right now know what that's like. Uh, so, and I hadn't even considered things like doing laundry. I mean, getting ready for work. You're you're able to obviously, you know, still work, but uh, that's it's still got to be a, a bit of a challenge. It is. It's you know, you're getting up in the dark. You're you're washing and basically cold water or boiling water on your barbecue and mixing it together. You know, it's camping used to be fun, but uh, I don't think we'll be camping for quite a while after this one. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard people call it extreme camping in the house, and it's not fun at all. And no. and any words for the, the crews that have been working to get the power back restored? Um, very thankful, very thankful. I feel bad. There's so many from the states um, that are here, from New Brunswick, from Quebec. And I, uh, you know, people, they are working their hardest, and we have to realize these people have been away from their families for 13 days. Just as much as we've been with a power, they've been away from their families. At least, at least we're here with our family. They're not. So, that, you know, we have to kind of think of that for them and be very appreciated. I mean, it's, it is frustrating. And I think you go for every emotion. You, you're upset. You cry. You laugh, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I, I will say um, the neighbors, People pull together very well. It's very good. I mean, people have, you know, invited people over and for tea because they, they have extra water boiled and that type of thing, you know. So it's kind of nice. It pulls people together. And we just have to remember and be thankful to these people that are here. They're, they're away from their own homes. And, you know, I've seen pictures of them sleeping on, on just army cots. And that can't be very fun for 13 days to sleep on. Well, Carrie, I wish uh, you all the best. I hope the power comes back sooner rather than later. I hope it's ahead of its restoration time. And thank you for helping me at least see a little bit more of what you've been experiencing through your eyes. I appreciate that. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you very much. And according to Nova Scotia Power, this afternoon, there's still about 4,100 customers who are affected, mostly along the Northumberland Street up in Pictou County. And it has been a challenge. I don't know if you saw this story from my colleague Ian Fairclough, uh, Halifax firefighters with the Urban Search and Rescue Team assisting in Pictou County. A group of them went up to offer their assistance. And to talk a little bit more about that, uh, Kevin Dean is... Well, he was incident commander most recently at the Task Force 5 uh, set up in Pictou County. He's also assistant chief of, of core operations with Halifax Regional Fire and Emergency. Uh, Kevin, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Appreciate it. No worries, Sheldon. Thank you for having me on. And uh, tell us a little bit about operationally what it was that you folks were doing to help get the power back on for folks in northern Nova Scotia. So for the most part, our crews had three different tasks. Actually, they're still up there. We'll be up there until Saturday. Uh, mainly, uh, we put together some brush crews so they would go out and work with Nova Scotia Power to clear power lines. Uh, also, brush crews worked with uh, the municipality up there to help clear some streets as well. Uh, there was a bottleneck at one point uh, with uh, power crews not having um, with traffic control, so uh, we also blocked some roads for them as well so they could you know get that work done as quick as they could makes it really hard when there's cars going back and forth so we had to help that there and we did some uh, wellness visits so along the way you know there was people that they haven't had power for a while they didn't have food and you know our, really at the end of the day Sheldon we did whatever we could do whatever they asked of us so that was the premise of when we went there we'll do whatever we can do to help the people of Picto. Now, when people uh, in, in Halifax say, I didn't even know we had a heavy urban search and rescue unit, a HUSAR, as some refer to it, uh, it's been about, what, five years now that you've, you've been rebuilding this program. Is this the kind of stuff that you train for? 
Yeah, you know what? I mean, we've had we had a, a heavy ur- urban search and rescue team many many years ago, but it has been revived. So three years ago, we started rebuilding it again. So, trained for all kinds of stuff: building collapse, um, hurricane relief. All, you know, very specific types of training. But we also realized in this deployment that. Uh, we have to be open to helping in whatever way we can. I mean, just giving water and giving food to somebody that hasn't seen anybody for seven days. And it's pretty touching out there when you see the impact that our members have had to those folks in that community. Now, I have in-laws who live in Mount Tom, and, and my wife went up to visit to check on them. Their phone was out. Their power was out. Really, the, there's no cell service where they were, were at, and it was quite dramatic. Describe what you saw when you first arrived on scene to, to us. You see trees down everywhere, roads blocked, power lines down. Uh, you know, some pockets, there was it was just like it is in Halifax today. Power everywhere, people doing their regular normal things, but there are some parts of, you know, their communities where, uh, there's devastation like probably you've never seen before. And, and when it comes to the reaction, when people see you folks roll up or see someone there to help, I'm sure they're quite pleased given how frustrating it, has, it must be for them after almost two weeks. No different than what you just said, Sheldon. A lot of people don't know that we have a USAR team here in Halifax. Uh, this was actually our first deployment and our first deployment, which was great to help people close close to us in Halifax. So. I guess the shock of some people, like you're from Halifax, what are you doing up here? That was kind of kind of cool for us. So I'll give you a really quick story. We had like our crews are out cutting trees and helping the power companies. But if we had a, a road, you'd go down a road and they, they cut their way down a road. They come across this uh, this lady, elderly lady, 77 years old. She hadn't seen anybody in a week. She was going down to the river, getting water from the stream to drink. She had a, a small package of hamburger that she was picking away at and going to her garden where there was hardly anything left trying to get food. You can imagine how ecstatic she was to see our members when they pulled up to help her. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it was touching, very touching for our members to uh, see the impact that they could actually have for some of these people. So, you know, they, they gave her some water. They, they spent some time with her, made sure she was okay relayed back to command because I was just looking after Task Force 5. Their bigger picture, DNR, Nova Scotia Power, they're the ultimate command down there. So, you know, we let them know that we had made contact. And the next morning, you know, when our crew members came back, you know, they felt pretty good about what they did, but the job wasn't really complete then. So the next morning when they got tasked to do some chainsaw work, they loaded up the truck with some water, some food, and they made sure that they checked on that lady before they their day really got started well and as we know uh, this is a unit that is here in the case of extreme urban issues but clearly you're willing to travel and this is all part of the bigger picture to be ready since we live in hurricane alley uh, for whatever might come our way uh, so to you kevin and your entire team and all of the the folks who are involved uh, thank you for for doing what you're doing and for sharing with us so we can have a better, better understand as, as frustrating as it must be, there are people who are still putting in the time to try and make life a little easier and, and make this come together a little quicker. Yeah, for sure, Sheldon. You know, our members out there, they're not getting a lot of sleep. Uh, they're working really hard. I am extremely proud of, you know, what they're doing down there for the communities. And it's great because we could be deployed right across Canada and right really around the world. It is nice to be able to have an impact on a community very, very close to us. And that's what we're here for. So a lot of hard work going on down there. Very extremely proud of our members. He is Assistant Chief of uh, Core Operations with Halifax Regional Fire and Emergency Services. He was acting as uh, one of the incident commanders for Canada Task Force 5, working to help with the recovery efforts in Pictou County. Kevin Dean, thank you again. Thanks, Sheldon.